Hi folks, welcome to part three of this lesson. So uh, we're gonna take a look at some examples in particular a couple which involve going from our traditional um, uh, equations for lines in 2D and working with uh, these new ones here. So we're gonna take a line that's given in standard form and they want us to find the vector equation. So the question is, how can we use this information uh, to determine uh, a, a direction vector since we need that for the vector equation line and finding a point well that's easy we can find lots of points now most of our talk before in terms of relating to our previous view of lines was uh, connecting direction vectors to slopes so i think it might be helpful to start uh, first start by putting this in slope intercept form so here we have negative 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 9 and so y is equal to 2 thirds x minus 3. Okay, and in fact, by doing this, we also have a point on this line. We know that zero, negative three, since negative three is the y-intercept, is gonna be on this line. So that's already taken care of. Uh, there's our r naught, so our vector going from zero, zero to zero, negative three. And now let's see if we can figure out the um, direction vector. So let me just um, draw myself a diagram as a guide. So I've got this, line here and what does the slope represent well it rep represents the ratio of the increase of y with respect to the increase of x so as x goes up by three y goes up by two okay so essentially what i'm looking for is i'm looking for a vector that has that exact same property okay that goes in the exact same direction in other words i'm looking for the vector that has an x component of three and a y component of two. So I realize here that my direction vector is just given by three, two. All right. But now that I have a point and a direction vector, I can write out the vector equation of the line. All right. So here I've got R is equal to my given point, which is zero, negative three, plus some multiple of my direction vector, which it, we just found was three, two. Okay, and here we should specify that t can be any real number. Okay, so again, we use the fact that there's this connection between the slope, which gives us a sense of the direction of a line, and a vector which indicates the exact direction of the line. All right, now I could have used any vector that was parallel to this line. So I could have used uh, the vector 6, 4. I could have used the vector negative 3, negative 2 in the opposite direction. Okay. This here was the easiest one based on uh, using this connection to the slope. All right, so let's move on to part B here. So in part B, let's see what they want us to do. They want us to find two vector equations to represent the line passing through these points. So first of all, I notice that this these are points in 3D. Okay, so I'm not going to bother being... Uh, exact here so let's call this a and let's call this b and i'm looking for the line that contains both a and b all right so well in terms of points i've got my choice i can use either one of these points so i can definitely use that in terms of my two vector equations but now i have to find a vector that's in the same direction as the line well i don't think you're going to be too surprised that what i'm going to do is take the vector from a to b of course i could have also taken the vector from B to A. That would also be parallel to this line. Okay, so in fact, I'll use those for my two different equations. All right, so let me take my first one, uh, which will be AB. Okay, and what does that give me here? Well, remember second minus first. So this gives me negative one minus two is negative three. This is a negative five minus negative three. So negative five plus three is negative two. And then here's zero minus six is negative six. Okay. So one of the equations that I could write is, well, let's say I start with this first point. So two, negative three, six, plus any multiple of my direction vector, negative three, negative two, negative six. Okay, another possible equation, okay, would just be, say in this case here, I'll use this second point. So negative one, negative five, zero, Plus, and instead of using negative three, negative two, six, I'll use the vector going the other direction, which is, which is also parallel to the line. So here, just to distinguish them, since I've already used T, so T can be any real number. Okay, here I'll use S, so I'll use three, two, six. 
Okay. Oh, sorry. I said I was going to use S. So S can be any real number. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that these look very different, yet they still generate the same line. What that means is that a value of T equals one won't produce the same point as a value of S equals one. Okay, we can see very clearly that those are going to produce different points. But the idea is this equation eventually produces all points on the line. Okay, so now let's quickly take this and write this in parametric form. So I'll use a second one here since it's closest. So I can write in parametric form that x is equal to negative 1 plus 3s. Okay, y is equal to negative 5 plus 2s. And here we've got z is going to be equal to 0 plus 6s, so 6s. All right. And if I want to write in symmetric form, well, it's x minus x naught, so x minus negative 1, x plus 1 over the x component of my direction vector 3 equals y minus negative 5, so y plus 5 over 2 and is equal to z minus 0, so z over the z component of the direction vector, 6. So this is the equation in symmetric form. All right, so let's look at C before we take a break and have you work on D. So here it says to find the equation in standard form. This case here, we'll just have the C on the left-hand side. That's uh, perfectly valid of this line here, okay, given in vector form. So I'm essentially going to do what I did before, is I'm going to use this connection between the slope in 2D and the direction vector. So I'll draw myself again a little diagram here to help me out. So here my direction vector is negative 2, 5. So negative 2, 5. So direction vector looks something like this. And we've got negative 2 and we've got 5. All right, so think about how we calculate the slope. Is the change in y over the change in s. So as s, uh, sorry, x, I guess I was thinking about the s up here. So as x goes up by 2, y goes down by 5. Okay, so in other words, my slope is just going to be equal to negative 5 over 2. Okay, so again, as x goes up by 2, y goes down by 5. So negative 5 over 2. All right, so now that I've got my slope, well, I already have a point on the line. I know that the point, so here my vector to my given point is just going to be 5, negative 3. Oh, sorry, I'm not looking for this here. That's the one I was given. Sorry about that. What I'm looking for is the point on the line. There you go, 5, negative 3. And now we're going to rewrite it in standard form. But I think the best way to do it is to first write it in slope-intercept form. Okay, so when y is equal to negative 3, We've got m, which is negative 5 halves, times the x value of 5 plus b. So here we're going to have negative 25 over 2. So here I'll put this over 2. I've got negative, that'll be negative 6 over 2 plus b. So b is equal to negative 6 over 2 plus 25 over 2. So that looks like it's going to be uh, 19 over 2. So my equation is y equals negative 5 halves x plus 19 over 2. All right. But of course, when we want it in standard form, we'd prefer having all integers. So I'm just going to multiply everything by 2 on both sides of the equation. So I have 2y equals negative 5x plus 19. Bring everything to the other side. So 5x plus 2y minus 19 equals 0. Okay, and there you have it. So just to recap here, because I made a, a little mistake there. So just to recap here, I drew my uh, direction vector negative 2, 5, and I calculated the slope that that vector creates. Okay, so negative 5 over 2. And then from there, I used the point on my line to find my slope-intercept form and then change that into standard form. Okay, so the last thing I want you to do is I want you to work on part D. And this is an interesting question because you're going to have to use, uh, I think you're going to have to use something that we learned very recently in order to solve this problem. Okay, so we'll be back with the last part of the lesson.